Good evening. Will we witness a changing of the guard in the SWPL1? A significant weekend to come. Here's what's coming up. Rangers have been eyeing the big prize all season and are within touching distance. But Glasgow City won't want to give up their 14-season grip on the title. Aberdeen have had a good season. Could they close the gap on fourth place Tibernian? Fresh from winning through to the final of the Scottish Cup, Celtic are away to Spartans. It's seventh against ninth as Mother will take on Hearts. And Partick Thistle have lost their last four games. They face a Hamilton Aki side who have taken four points from their last three. Yes, an intriguing weekend's action to come, all in the company of former Scotland striker Julie Fleeting. Well, there's only one place to start, Rangers against Glasgow City. And Rangers knew a win or a draw and they would be crowned champions this season. But Glasgow City have held that title for the last 14 seasons, so surely they'd be fighting to the end. Alistair Lamont has a commentary on this one. A potentially historic day as Rangers seek to clinch their first ever SWPL title and take over from the reigning champions Glasgow City who they face today. Rangers make three changes from their last outing. Westrup, Hay and Ross all come back in. City's captain Hayley Lauder returns as Glasgow City look to cling on to their title. And it will be a minute silence ahead of kickoff as Rangers continue to remember Jimmy Bale. Hayley Lauder to send in the free kick as Glasgow City look for the opening goal. Hoisted in. It's a chance, a great save by Jenna Fife to keep out Lauren Davidson. Davidson did well to find room for the shot in the end, a tight angle. Shine out to Lauder. Chinchilla. She's past one. Fully to deal with the chance. Can she squeeze it home? Rangers just managed to scramble it around the post. Big chance for Fully to deal with. Just a minute or so after coming on. And you have to wonder if she was just that little bit sharper. Would she have been able to convert here? Desperate defending from Rangers. Ross with a few options, but one of them is Doherty. It's a good ball from Doherty, and Van should have done a lot better arriving at the back post. It's a terrific ball from Doherty. Vance picks up, it's a good challenge. Arna outsider, but Jenna Clark with a terrific tackle to win possession back for Glasgow. Here's Davidson now, bursting forward. Shine, full to Tadilo in the middle, it must be, and Glasgow City have the goal. But it's offside, and the South African can't believe our luck. Our second big opportunity since coming on. It's a wonderful counter-attack led by Davidson and the ball in from Shine is also excellent. It does look like Fuli Tadilu goes too early. Vance's corner, right on the money that one. And Glasgow City managed to scramble it away. And that caused consternation in the six yard box. It was Alexander eventually who got the vital touch and then cleared by Walsh. Now it's Hay looking to take on Mullen on the outside. Good defending though. Not the best of clearances however, Riley picks up for Rangers. In towards McCoy. Comes back to Cornet. Not a bad strike. Pulling out the save from Alexander. Just have been drifting wide this left foot effort. Alexander down to make sure. Forward by Riley. 
McCoy's in here, Alexander's come a long way, who's that going to fall for? Well, fortunately for Glasgow City, they were able to clear through Claire Walsh. Alexander looked to have made the wrong choice here. And she came all the way out, but in the end, it worked well for her. Flicked on by McCoy, and she'll chase it herself. Is this the moment the Rangers clinch the title? It's a good challenge. Just looked like opening up there for Kayla McCoy. Credit though to Claire Walsh, an important boot in there. Gleason seeing the title slipping away from Glasgow City's grasp. One final chance perhaps here for Glasgow City. And it comes, and out comes Jenna Fife, and surely now that is it. The celebrations can begin as Rangers clinch their first ever SWPL title. It wasn't quite the sparkling performance we've seen from Rangers throughout the season, but it matters not a jot, they got the job done. A tremendous achievement, unbeaten throughout the league season with one game to play. Just the second time today that they've dropped points, both to Glasgow City. And Glasgow City deposed for the first time as champions of the SWPL, having won it 14 times on the trot. And finally, the reign is over and Rangers take over as SWPL champions. A lot of hard work has earned Rangers the right to lift this SWPL trophy for the very first time. Cue a big party. The title is in the bag, and they have earned the right to celebrate. Well, Julie, brilliant scenes there at the end as Rangers clinch that uh, title and deserving of the championship. Their record, their form has been brilliant this season, hasn't it? It's been incredible this season. I think off the back of last season, they had a disappointing time, I think, to not come away with a trophy and to not get a European spot. I think it made this season all the more important for them. Um, and they, they, they had built their squad. They had a great squad last season. They built on it. They worked on the kind of experiences that they gained last year and they've been phenomenal this year. They've absolutely been phenomenal. Um, relentless in games, they've been consistent throughout the season um, and, and those big moments, those big games, they've been able to produce um, and they'll be absolutely delighted to, to get that title this year. Yeah, one game to go for them. They've played 26, have won 24, drawn two, no defeats at all. It's interesting you mentioned the fact that they were would have been disappointed last season. Would that have spurred them on for their ambitions for this season, do you think? Absolutely. They invested financially. They, had, they signed big players last season. It didn't quite go the way that they would have hoped. Um, and I think this season they would have wanted to build on it. They added to their squad. Um, they, they increased the quality that they already had because they're, they're going to pick up injuries and they have picked up injuries but they've been able to, to bring in players of quality to replace those, those girls and um, it, as you say, what an incredible season to go all the way through and not lose a game and only draw two of their games is just unbelievable and, and they thoroughly deserve the title. City obviously would be disappointed. They were hoping to go for 15 titles uh, in, in a row, uh, which would have been obviously a, a fantastic feat. Um, what will they look to do for, for next season? They'll, they'll have to regroup, they'll have to bounce back. I think first of all, Glasgow City, what an unbelievable club. To go 14 years, a club who stand alone, to go 14 years of winning the title is just absolutely incredible. And this season, you, you can hardly say they've had a bad season. They've lost one game, they've drawn three games. That and almost every other league in the world is enough to win you the title. So first of all, what an incredible, incredible club that they have. Um, they have had a bit of a transition season, they've had a rebuild in terms of the squad, they've lost players, they've had to replace them, they've done so really well um, and they also lost their manager as well. So, 
you can say it's been a tough season for them. Rangers have had that consistency throughout their club. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly um, they're a quality side and you can see them go on even next season um, and, and really be challenging again. Let's have a look at some of the action from the weekend's game because Glasgow City in the first half especially, they came close to spoiling the party, didn't they? They did. Um, they knew that the only thing acceptable for them was a win and they came at Rangers. They created quite a few opportunities. Rangers defended their box really well. It was a great opportunity for Lauren Davidson. She kind of makes it herself. She manages to, to get herself a yard of space and she fires a shot at, at Jenna Fife, whose positioning was excellent. She makes a really good save. Um, but th there, there was few opportunities. There was the offside goal where when you're looking at it, you're wondering why she strays offside. She's got the time. She's looking along the line. Um, and certainly the, the officials made the right call. So th there was a few opportunities for City, but um, Rangers... There was going to be nerves initially, but they defended well, they performed well, um, and they got exactly what they wanted in the end. Yes, and congratulations to Rangers from all of us here. Now, seven points separated Aberdeen and Hibernian in fourth and fifth spot, respectively. Would Aberdeen close the gap or would Hib cement fourth spot? Commentary on this one from Rachel Boyle and Stuart Mitchell. Let's have a look at the team news. Hibernian with a few changes from the 2-2 draw against Hamilton last Sunday. A bit of a reshuffle at the back again with Jenna Penman and Joel Murray back in. And for Aberdeen, they're forced into a change with Lauren Campbell injured in Tuesday night's victory against Partick Thistle. So 16-year-old Millie Urquhart makes her debut. Only the target. Held up by Collins. Kavanagh takes over and goes for the effort. Off the crossbar. Collect Kavanagh, you could see her there, just hanging around. Yeah, it's unreal from Cav. That's why she's playing out on that right-hand side, so she can cut in and be on her strong foot. <laughs> Ailey Adams cut again and loops that one over, Aaliyah Jameet. And it's a great start for Hibernian with only a quarter of the game played. And it's Ailey Adams picking up her seventh league goal of the season. It's Hibs 1, Aberdeen 0. Yeah, it's a fantastic goal from Ailey Adams. I think she's been... Individually, her confidence has just grown week on week. And I think you can see there, she's she's got the confidence to go past Bailey Collins there and get it on her good, strong foot and lifts it over the keeper. Ready, the free kick taker on the spot to dispossess. But she's played in Bailey Hutchison. She might have to go on her own. Takes the touch and strikes high into the net. And Aberdeen hit back with a terrific equaliser from Bailey Hutchison. I've just spoken about Bailey Hutchison getting bodies round her to get her into the game, but she doesn't need it on this occasion. She's she's pounced on a mistake from Leah Eddy, but she's still got a lot to do there. She's taken her touch inside, and what a finish that is in the top corner at the near post. There was nothing the Hibs keeper could do about that. Well, it's not late. Comes off her, there's the shot, did it creep over the line? The claims are yes, look towards the referee. What is the decision? It looks to be another corner. Rachel, you're a bit more to that side than I am, so I'm going to put the pressure all on you. What do you think? I don't know if I'm just being a bit biased, but it looked like the girl on the line was maybe clawing it back. Um, is that whole ball over? Yeah, I think she has. She's kicked it off the post and it's managed to ricochet behind, I don't know how, but for me I think that's a goal Patterson heads away Murray back in McGregor and Adams both there and there's no doubt that time Hibs are back in the lead I think it's no more than they deserved after that decision going against them, I think they've kept the pressure alive and they've kept their heads and Ailey Adams is using her stature there to get her body in the right position and just head it down past the goalkeeper. Murray has a run from Shannon McGregor ahead. She's peeled off into a lot of space. McAloney and Adams are bursting into the box. Forrest tries to clear, but it's into the back of her own net. And Hibs have a 3-1 lead. I think it's great play from Hibs there. I think they've been composed on the ball at the back. Gabby English just setting off uh, Joelle Murray, who finds a great pass down the line. And Shannon McGregor does what she does best. She just drifts into areas where she can pick up the ball and she puts a great ball across. And, uh, great for Hibs, disappointing for Aberdeen, but there's still a lot to play for in this game. Michaela McAloney 
charging past Forrest. She's one on one with Meach. It's Macaloni! And tucked away. And the afternoon gets even better for Hibernian. It's great for Nikki there. She's shown great determination. I think she's made that goal all herself. She showed the belief to get there ahead of Kelly Forrest. And, and she deservedly gets the goal. Um, it's a great finish from her. She's really composed. And I think the goalkeeper was helpless. She had nothing. She could do nothing there. We're so inconsistent. But when we play and we turn up and we get the performance that we got today, I, I just like standing back and watching them. We're a team with real energy and a good bit of flair about us. In spells, I thought we played really well. And even, you know, when we went down, we managed to get a goal back and stay in the game. And at that point, you know, we thought that we maybe could, if we could have even held on to that till half time, it would have been a bonus going in at half time and with a 1 1. Well, Julie, that was a convincing win for Hibbs in the end. And Dean Gibson's right, isn't he? When Hibbs are on song, they look so good. They do, and, and today they look like they were enjoying their football again. I think they've had moments this season where they haven't quite had the consistency, but they have a really, really strong side, and you could see that today. They were really quality in all areas of the pitch. Four great goals, um, and certainly deserved the three points. They've got a lovely blend of youth and experience, and one of those youthful players really stands out, Ailey Adams, signing a new two-year contract, scoring two goals uh, at the weekend as well. She's a real key player for them, isn't she, now turning out to be? She is. She looks like a real threat. Our, our goal, she, she took very, very well. The first goal in particular, she's driving, and as she does so, she cuts right across Collins. She gets the ball onto her, her strong foot, and it's a brilliant finish. The second goal, she's in and around the box. She's desperate to latch on to anything. It was a cross from Joelle Murray, a looping cross, and all she's thinking about is trying to get on the end of it and, and another cool finish. So she's been a great player for Hibs and someone who's really been able to benefit from the experience that's been round about her. Aberdeen, first season up, and they've actually had a decent season, haven't they? I think they've had a great season. I think when you think about them just coming up, um, I think what they've been able to achieve so far, they can be really proud. I think you can see what Emma Hunter's building at Aberdeen. She's got a great blend. We've talked about the youth that Hibs have. They've got exactly the same in Aberdeen, especially in, in terms of their, their striker and, and Bailey Hutchison. She's a player um, who has a lot of talent. She's someone who's got an eye for goal. In today's game, she latches onto a bad pass and as she gets the ball, she's driving and she's so confident when she gets in the box and a really, really strong finish. And she's a player that I think we can look to for the future. Yes, indeed, I think you're right. Well, Celtic have won the League Cup already this season. They're through to the final of the Scottish Cup, but they'll be looking to end their league season on a high. They were away to Spartans, and Amy Canavan has commentary on this one. It's the final home league game of the season for Spartans at Ainsley Park and Devin McCulloch makes five changes to the side that were defeated 1-0 by Motherwell two weeks ago. Tegan Bowie, Clarissa Larissey and Charlie Wellings all have goals already this season against Spartans. Celtic booked their place in the Scottish Cup final last weekend and it was Charlie Wellings at the double and here she is through an early warning shot for Spartans. Larissey. She's into seeing a lot of the ball in these early stages. Feeds through Charlie Wellings again. And this time it is past Rachel Harrison. That's goal number 35 of the season for Charlie Wellings. She's been magnificent leading the line for Celtic. That's 1-0 to the hoops. Wellings is through again. Good save by Rachel Harrison. Larissey, goal last time out at Ainsley Park. Does pick out Jacinta and it's a phenomenal save again from Rachel Harrison. Boy, that will find its way through to Charlie Wellings. Tees up Jacinta. Oh my goodness, she rockets that one. It's a glorious opportunity. Boy, netted. In the first encounter this season, as did Charlie Wellings, and she's done so again. The first of the afternoon came from her right foot, and this second here has came from her left. She really can do it all. And Callie Gibb, up against Chloe Craig, peels away. 
There is Sarah Cleland. And that has the beating of Chloe Johnston. Spartans are not down and out yet. Sarah Cleland claws the hosts back in this afternoon with a sensational strike. Harks feeds that into the path of Larissa. And the two goal advantage for Celtic is restored. Defence splitting pass from Sarah Harks, the substitute. And Larissa sneaks that beyond Rachel Harrison. Izzy Atkinson sees up Charlie Wellings, does well, creates space, and Rachel Harrison is there again with that leg to deny Wellings our hat trick today. It's a, a, a difficult place to come. They are very, very aggressive and make things very difficult. And I, th I thought we were outstanding. Maybe in the final third uh, we should be better. I thought we, we uh, missed so many clear, clear chances. So we should have a, a different scoreline. But still, I, I take the 3-1. It's our seventh uh, win in a row. And it's very, very important so, for us. So delighted. Yeah, I thought defensively, I thought we did pretty well today. Even though we conceded three goals, I felt we limited Celtic. Our game plan worked. Um, we'd just like to have us to be a wee bit more composed in possession. Well, Julie, I thought Celtic looked fairly comfortable there at the weekend, but Fran Alonso, the manager, he wanted a bit more, didn't he? He wanted more goals. I think that shows you the ambition of the club. Ainsley Park is not an easy place to go to, um, and they've come away with three goals. Yes, they conceded one, but they created numerous opportunities. And I think he's delighted with the performance, but yes, when you're creating opportunities, and certainly against the your Rangers and, and City, you don't get too many opportunities, so he's, he's maybe looking for them to be a little more clinical in front of goal. Charlie Wellings among the goals at the weekend, but let's pinpoint out uh, Jacinta, who was among the awards uh, this season, and quite rightly so. Um, she was really key for them this weekend, wasn't she? She was. She's always key for them. She's a player who's had a terrific season, thoroughly deserved um, to, to collect her award, and especially Charlie Welling's first goal. She picks the ball up, she's so composed, her vision and awareness is incredible. She spots the run from Wellings and plays, plays a great ball into her path and a brilliant finish from, from Wellings. Spartans, Debbie McCulloch, their manager, said she was fairly happy with how they performed despite the defeat. I think when you're playing against a side like Celtic, they've got so many players who have great attack and threat, and I think she was delighted with the way they defended. Um, yes, they lost three goals, but they could have lost more in, in and around their box. Um, they were organised at times. They also scored a really good goal as the ball comes over to, to Sarah Cleland. She takes a brilliant first touch to set herself up and a, a wonderful finish. So at that point, that could have got them back into the game. It didn't because Celtic had gone on and got that third goal, but at that stage, it gave them a little bit of hope. Let's bring you the rest of the weekend's action now, shall we? And Partick Thistle were up against Hamilton Ackies. Motherwell were up against Hearts. The sun was shining at Alliance Park as Paul Brownlee's side were pushing for top six. With little goal-mouth action in the first half, 15 minutes after the break, the home side were awarded a free kick for this challenge. With the referee in a good position to see the action, there was no hesitation on making the call. Ingalls stepped up, plenty of headers in the box and the Hearts defence unable to clear, the ball finally fell to McDonald in goal, who didn't hesitate in taking a shot from close range. Claims from the Hearts defence for offside, however the officials didn't agree and the home side went in front. A final corner for Motherwell and a chance for Addy. However, it was in safe hands with Parker Smith. A vital three points as Motherwell hoped for a strong finish to their season. Huge, you know, we, we, we knew how big the day was going to be for us, so it was one game at a time. Um, I'm delighted to get the three points today. Now we can turn our attention to Aberdeen next Sunday. I think that this one of the worst game that we play in this season. And for that, I think that, that, no, that we didn't deserve nothing. The fans didn't have long to wait for action at Peters Hill Park as McBreerty's corner created a great opportunity for Fisher early doors. The Hamilton keeper had to pull out a strong save, but with the defence unable to clear, Amy Bullock used the woodwork to smash home the opener in the eighth minute. 
Eager to increase their lead, Brian Graham's side had a good chance with Donaldson's cross coming close. McBrearty tried a shot from a tight angle, however Rind was ready to collect. It was the visitor's turn to get in on the action. A great strike from Kirsty McIntosh from outside the box, in off the bar and crashed home for the equaliser. Birchill on hand just to make sure. After the break, Ackies were looking to go in front. A good ball in from Blues, but Muir's shot went just wide. In injury time, Lindsay Blues took advantage after the Partick keeper lost control of the ball. Blues tapped in the winner, securing all three points for Gary Doctor's side. Well, I think we've finished well. Players are going into the end of the season with a bit of confidence because it was hard at times, long periods, uh, you know, and we've now picked up seven points <clears throat> from the last four games. So that's a really good record for them in the league. I think we just ran out of steam. We've had three games, three tough games in a week. Um, and I think we could just see the girls uh, that were tired, fatigued, cramping. Um, so that had a big effect on us today. Well, Julie, Hamilton Ackies have taken seven points from their last four games. There's no relegation this season. Are they playing with a team that are playing with a bit of freedom, no fear? I think they, I think they probably are now. I think when you don't have that, um, fear of relegation then you do you can relax a bit more and they can work on their performances they haven't had a great season but recently they've started to, to grind out a few results and they can be pleased with that because it can then it's another year of experience at this level and they can then they have something then to, to build on for, for next year and let's just talk about Motherwell they were happy with their weekend's win yeah they, they were um, I think they want to get into sixth spot it's within touching distance for them, so they want to still continue to pick up points and finish the season in a high. Um, it's another year of experience for the players at the club. They've got a lot of young players um, within their squad. and um, They had a great performance against Rangers last week, another good performance to, to build on today. And um, Yeah, they'll be hoping to, to finish the season off in a high. Yeah, they will indeed. Let's have a look at how the SWPL1 table looks after all that. Confirmation there that Rangers are champions on 74 points with one game left for them. And uh, Glasgow City have two games left. They're on 66 points. Hibs have cemented fourth spot. Aberdeen and Spartans battling for fifth with two games left. No relegation, but could Hamilton Ackies move off the bottom come next week? And there's plenty more sporting action for you across the BBC. On Tuesday, Sports Scene brings you the first leg of the semi-final Premiership playoff between Inverness and Arbroath. The midweek Premiership action will be covered on Sports Scene highlights on Wednesday at 10.40. That's on BBC One Scotland. The second leg of the playoff semi-final is on Friday nights on BBC Scotland from 7.30. And you can catch the latest Behind the Goals podcast on BBC Sounds and BBC Sports Scotland. That's it from us for this week. My thanks to Julie Fleeting. We'll be back for the final round of the SWPL1 next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.